Roy James. And I spend most of my working life trying to persuade 180,000 consultants to travel just a little bit less, all in the cause of less carbon, less global warming, and less refugee polar bears. <laughs> and in the process of doing this, I end up traveling a ridiculous amount of time. So I end up spitting on aeroplanes, or even spitting on aeroplanes. <laughs> now, I want to tell you tonight about a flight I took a few months ago with my uh, rather straight-laced head of carbon accounting, Gavin. Now, Gavin was a cross between a bean-counting accountant and a tree-hugging eco-warrior. So kind of think, think swampy with a calculator. <laughs> Gavin was also terrified of flying. So the fact that we'd been delayed two hours because of mechanical issues hadn't helped. So anyway, we're finally sitting on the plane, ironically in row 13, and um, bing bong, Hello, this is your steward speaking. I'd like to welcome you aboard this evening. Uh, we've nearly finished boarding, but if there is a Mr. Posthumous on the plane, could he identify himself? Gavin goes, Mr. Posthumous? That's just not funny. That means dead. <laughs> Don't worry, Gavin. It's probably with that grim-looking crowd over there, you know, Dr. Stiff and Mrs. Cadaver and their evil-looking children, Rigor and Mortis. <laughs> or perhaps he's a suicide bomber with a sense of humour. <laughs> anyway, a couple of minutes later, bing bong! Hi, it's the steward again. I'm, uh, uh, it seems that Mr. Posthumous is late. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> but don't worry, we've removed his bag from the flight and we're now good to go. Hey Gav, do you think he was uh, dead? Do you think it was a body bag and he was in it? <laughs> anyway, bing bong. Hello, this is the pilot speaking. I'd very much like to also add my welcome to you on this Airbus 330 flight from Dallas to London Heathrow. Um, I'm especially delighted to welcome you aboard this, aboard this evening because this is in fact my very first flight. <laughs> from Dallas to London, <laughs> having flown out here yesterday. <laughs> I'd like to apologise for the uh, delay boarding the flight. There was apparently some intermittent problems with the engine on the way over, um, but the mechanics had a good look. They can't find the problems, so they say we're all good to go. <laughs> Gavin's looking rather nervous. In fact, he's just looking out the window at this point. Anyway, so um, we finally um, roll down the runway and we take off and Gavin's got distracted by the in-flight magazine. He's reading some article about weight and fuel efficiency. And suddenly he says, James, look what it says here, look what it says here. It says, if you take a tea bag and you stuff it down the back of the seat and you leave it there for a year, the extra weight on that plane will cause it to burn a whole extra litre of jet fuel over the year. Well, Gavin's happy now, he's got his calculator out again, he's working out the impact of weight on the Arctic tundra. At one point he goes, hey James, maybe they should ban toupees on flights. What? Well, if they made bored people travel hairless, the extra weight saving, yeah, there's the fuel saving, it'd probably save at least a couple of polar bears. Yeah, very good, Gavin. That's that's just crazy. You'll be suggesting they uh, you'll be suggesting compulsory Brazilians at airports next. <laughs> Gavin gets distracted next by the moving map. You uh, suddenly sweat coming down his face. In in Virgin's in Virgin Atlantic's infinite wisdom, they've decided to use on the map the wreck of the Titanic as a uh, as a landmark for nervous transatlantic flyers. <laughs> Hey, Gavin, I point out, look, they put the Bermuda Triangle there as well. I wonder what else we can find. Maybe the, uh, the wreck of the, the Hindenburg disaster, or the, uh, the, the Concorde crash in Paris, or wasn't there that Air France A330 that disappeared somewhere over the Atlantic? Hang on, didn't the pilot say this was an Airbus A330? I managed to get some sleep, and then about three hours later, we're jolted awake, I think turbulence. Gavin is, is wide-eyed. He's, he's still in his magazine. He's got to the letters page, the very last page. James, James, that's what it says here. Somebody's written in to say, how far could a plane fly if all the engines fail? 
and it seems the answer is 120 miles. And I've calculated we're exactly 865 miles from the nearest land. And the engine's a failure, and what the pilot said, I think we're all going to die. That was literally the last thing that, uh, that Gavin said. He spent the final hour of the flight just sitting, staring, somberly, and silently into the middle distance. We're probably 15 seconds, no more than that from landing, and all of a sudden there's one final shudder. The engines come on, the plane shoots into the air, bags fall out of the overhead lockers. Even before the pilot can come on and tell us that the, uh, the landing computers have failed, and it's all right because he's going to go around and try again, Gavin has slumped forward, exhaling his very final carbon dioxide contribution <laughs> to global warming. <laughs> I pressed the call button. The, the, uh, the chief steward comes over. I looked at Gavin. I looked at the steward. I think the search is over. I think we found Mr. Posthumus. <laughs> Thank you, good night.